Hey everyone, Kelsey here and welcome back to Gal. Today I'm showing you how to create this really cool timer animation inside of After Effects using expressions. So that way the timer is responsive to the shape design. And I'll be showing you how to take all of the different shapes and elements and turn it into a motion graphics template that you can use inside of Premiere Pro. So there's going to be a lot of technical steps in this tutorial, but I've put time coded chapters below. So if you need to review anything, you can just skip around and review or just pause and take it slow. Now the timer animation, I've turned it into a motion graphics template already, which is available free to my patrons currently, or it's on sale on my store and you'll be able to customize the colors, change the size, adjust the glow, the dash width, etc. So if you want to just download the MoGrid itself, you can become a patron or get it from my store. And if you're not following me yet on Instagram, you can head over to Instagram and give me a follow there for some behind the scenes content. You can help us get to 10K followers. That way we can share links in our Instagram stories. That would be awesome. And lastly, a special thanks to Envato Elements for sponsoring today's video. You can get 70% off their unlimited creative assets each month using my unique link just down below. All right, get your coffee, get your tea, and let's go ahead and jump on in. So first, let's create a new composition. I'm going to call this Gal Timer, and I'm working in a 4K resolution. Then hit OK. Next, let's use the text tool to type out 05 or any number at all as it will become irrelevant once we apply our expression sliders. You can change this to be in your desired font. In my case, I'm using Montserrat Black and I'll update the size. Then I'm going to use the align tools here to center it horizontally and vertically in the frame. Next, let's create a new adjustment layer. Right click and create a new adjustment layer and let's press enter or return on a PC to rename it to control. So now this control adjustment layer, this is going to be the layer that we're going to apply all of our expression controls to. Go to effects and presets and let's search for slider control and drag this onto our control layer and let's rename this to time control. Next from effects, search for checkbox control and drag it onto our control layer. Let's rename this one to count down. Now it's important that you spell these even with the capitalization correctly, because if you misspell it, the expression's not going to work. So make sure that you have it spelled exactly the way I do. So the expression will work. Now let's make our comp window a bit bigger for our expression. Let's toggle open the text layer and go to source text. Next, Press down the Alt key or the Option key on a Mac and click on the stopwatch here. This will activate expressions and create a new field from which we can then type out or paste in our expression. Now I have my expression already typed out here in my notepad, but you will find this expression text down in my description box below that you can copy and paste into your field. So once you get it copied, you're going to go down into the field and press command V or control V on a PC to replace and paste in this new expression in this field. Now expressions are a little bit more complicated. So if you really want to fully understand how it works, essentially it's JavaScript code. And what you can do with it is you can have this expression control a particular effect on a layer. If you want to learn more about how expressions work, I actually recommend checking out schoolofmotion.com. They have a bunch of free tutorials and full paid courses to help you become a master at how to use expressions. And I've also linked to some other free time expressions that they have just down below in my description box. So after it's pasted, you will then see that our number is set to zero, zero. To change this value so the expression will work, let's say you want it to count up to 10 seconds. So we can just change this value from the time control slider to 10. And now when you press the space bar to play, the number will count from one to 10. Now, if you want it to count down from 10, 10 to one, all you need to do is check the checkbox on next to countdown. And now it counts down because that is what our expression told the slider to do. If you wanted to count down from 90, let's say, you'll need to make sure that your composition is at least 90 seconds. So go to your hamburger menu next to the comp and select composition settings. In here, be sure to update the duration of the comp to 90 seconds or one minute and 30 seconds or whatever duration that you want. 
then press OK. Now the comp will be longer, 90 seconds, but you will see that our layers need to be extended. So you need to select all your layers by holding shift and then click the end of them and drag it out so that way it meets the end duration of the comp. And for this, I'm just going to change my timer back to 10 for now because that's what I'll be working with, but we can always change this at any time. So now that we set up our timer, now we can go in and create the shapes and the design to go along with the expression. So let's go and select the ellipsis tool, then click on our comp and hold shift to drag out a perfect circle. And then once it's created, make sure to move it below our text layer in the comp. Press enter or return and let's rename this to circle just for organization. Then use the align tools to make sure it's in the exact center of our frame. Now let's duplicate this layer to make our outer ring. Press command D on a Mac or control D on a PC to duplicate the circle shape. Now we can press S on our keyboard to pull up the scale parameters of this new layer. And let's use this value here to make the circle a bit bigger. Now let's go up to the fill options and press on the word fill and let's change the fill to empty by clicking on this icon with a red slash. And then we can click on the word stroke to enable a stroke fill. And then you can play around with the stroke width. I'll set mine to around 60. Then use the align tools here to center it in the frame. Now I want it to be a little bit bigger, so I'm gonna go back to the scale controls here and scale it up, and then use the align tools again to make sure it's aligned. Now with this layer selected, let's search for fill from effects and presets, and then we can add this color fill to the layer. The default color is red, and I'm going to change this to yellow, but you can make any color that you like. Next, we're going to add the dashes to this ring. So to do that, we need to toggle open the contents of our stroke circle and go to the stroke controls. As you scroll down, you'll find an area for dashes and just click on the plus icon to add the dashes and then open it up to adjust the dash value. Let's just start with 20, but you can change this value at any time. But now you can see that we have our dashes. Now I want to add a glow effect on top of this ring. Go to effects and presets and search for glow. And now from effect controls, we can adjust the parameters, but first let's zoom in to around 100 and then you can press H on your keyboard to activate the hand tool to then move the graphic into better view. Then press V to go back to the selection tool and here we can adjust the glow parameters. I'll first increase the radius and then I'll play around with the intensity level until I get it right. So I think it looks good for now and I'll fit the comp back in frame and now I can turn the glow on and off and you can see the effect that it has. So next I'm gonna show you how to animate this ring to move with the time countdown. But before I do that, let me tell you a little bit about today's sponsor, Envato Elements. So Envato Elements is my go-to platform for finding templates, stock video, music, and sound effects that I need to get my project done. A lot of times I don't have time to create the custom animation I need for a specific project. By going to Elements, I can go there quickly and just search for the template I need and I can be confident that it's going to have at least one template or several templates that I can choose from to try out in my project. It just feels so good as a creator to know that I can rely on this platform that's always going to be there with unlimited downloads that I can try out. And the best part is, is I have a peace of mind about the licensing as well. You can download it once and use it in as many projects as you want. You don't have to worry about the licensing factor. For example, if you're looking for specific types of timer countdowns that are a little bit different than the look that I'm showing you in this video, they have a bunch of different timer toolkits that you can try out to find a different look for a particular type of counter or clock that you're looking for and thousands of other effects as well, whether it's transitions, logo reveals, or animations. So I put links to some of my favorite timer animations just down below that are available on Elements. And if you wanna try it out for your first month, you can get 70% off using my link below. And also right now there's a flash sale going on. So if you've already used Elements before and you want to repurchase it, there is a flash sale. So I'll put links for that just down below. So thank you so much Elements and let's go ahead and get back into the tutorial. 
So for the animation, let's duplicate this ring first by pressing Command D on a Mac or Control D on a PC. And on this duplicate, let's turn off the glow effect. Press E on your keyboard with the layer selected to pull up the effects on this layer. And then we can simply turn off the glow visibility. Then you can press T on your keyboard to bring up the transparency or the opacity controls. And let's reduce the opacity down to around 20% and we can always change this later. Then let's press enter or return to rename this layer to ring one. And now let's rename the other ring to ring two. Now make sure that ring two is on top of ring one. Now we can turn off the visibility of ring two and you can see we have the first ring that is more transparent without the glow. So we want to make the glowing bright dash ring on ring two to animate around on top of ring one. So to do this, let's go to ring two and let's toggle open the contents. And from this little add icon, this is where we're going to add trim paths. Now open up the trim paths parameter to get the start and end. We need to add in another expression here, but only to the end parameter. Press Alt or Option on a Mac and click on the stopwatch next to end. And here we can paste in this expression. And again, this expression I have here on screen is available for copy and pasting down in my description box below. Now all this expression does is connect the end path to the time control effect slider. So it will change time based on the time control value number as you see when it plays back. So this animation now will change if we change the time control value. So if we go back to our control layer and change the value to 30, and now when we play back, it's a much slower animation because the value is now 30. So let's go ahead and collapse the control layer. And now let's use the type tool to type out some other text to give it context, like time left, or you can type out seconds, for example. And you can update the font to make it less of a bold font if you like. So after I type it out, I'll use the selection tool to bring it below the countdown number. And then I'll make the font size a bit lower. And then I'll use the align tools to align it horizontally. And now I'm going to move the number up to make more space. To do that, I'll go to the number layer and press P on my keyboard to bring up the position controls. And then I'll click on and move the Y vertical value to the left to bring it up in the comp. And I'll do the same to the time left position as well until it looks just right. So now we have our fully functional animation in After Effects and you can export this and use it in Premiere Pro. But what if you wanna be able to customize this and use it over and over again in Premiere Pro? This is where we can turn it into a motion graphics template using the essential graphics panel in After Effects. First, let's move the time left layer just below the control layer for organization. Then to make it into a motion graphics template, go to window essential graphics. And from the primary dropdown here, we're going to choose the composition that holds all of our parameters. In my case, it's gal timer. Now we can begin to add in the values that we want to be able to customize in Premiere Pro. So first, let's start with the number controls. Let's open up the controls layer and from time control, let's drag the slider control into our essential graphics panel. And here we can rename it to time. From here, we can now use the slider to adjust the time value. So that way, when you move it, you'll see that the animation will change. It's responsive to the slider. And when you click on edit range, it'll let you choose the minimum and maximum values in the slider. So if your composition is 90 seconds, for example, you want the highest value then to be 90 seconds here. So I'll change mine to 90 and hit okay. And I'll set my value to 20. And now let's add more parameters. Next, let's open up the countdown checkbox and let's bring the checkbox into the essential graphics panel. And this will now enable you to choose if you want the timer to count up or down. If it's off, it will count up. And if it's on, it will count down. Next, let's add in our text values. For the number, let's toggle open the source text layer and drag the source text into the essential graphics. Then you can give this field a custom name if you like, that makes sense. And then you can select edit properties and you can add in enable custom font selection, font size adjustment, and faux styles. And that way you'll be able to adjust and stylize the font further in Premiere Pro. 
and let's do the exact same thing with the source text from the time left. So now let's move on to the colors. For the fill of the circle, I actually want this to be a gradient. So before I add in the colors, let's go ahead and go to effects and search for gradient ramp. And let's drag this on our circle layer. Then you can choose two colors of your liking to mix. And you can also move the start color and the end color positions. So that way you can choose how the two colors mix together in the frame. Open up the gradient ramp effect and drag in the start color and the end color into the essential graphics panel. And then you can give them new names within the essential graphics. Next, we can drag in the fill color effect for ring one and ring two in the essential graphics panel. Simply open up the fill effect and drag the color parameter into the graphics panel and do the same with ring one. This is useful here if you want to change the color of ring one so it'll be different from ring two. But let's say you want two color elements to be controlled by the same color control. So you want them both to change color at the same time. This is where we can use another expression control called the color control. For example, if you want the two text layers here to be one color, this is where we can go to effects and search for color control and drag this on our control layer. Let's rename this to font color and let's make the color white. Then we can go to effects and presets and search for generate fill. And with both text layers selected in the comp, we can then double click on fill and it will automatically apply the fill effect to both layers at once. Now they are both red by default, but we can pick whip these fill effects to the font color control from the control layer. To do that, press E to pull up the fill effect on both layers. And next we can press Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac and then click on the stopwatch next to the color fill to activate the expression just like we did before. But this time we're gonna take the swirly icon called the pick whip and take the pick whip and drag it on top of the font control layer here. And that way it's connected to the font color control and now it's white. And then we can do the same thing with the second fill layer. You're going to activate the expression then pick whip it to the font color control, the exact same one. And now they are both white. Then you can take the font color control here from the control layer and drag it into the essential graphics panel. And here you can change the color and now both the number color and the time left color change at the same time. You can control the colors of any number of elements that you want to be the same color by doing this exact same process. So let's say you want the two ring colors to be the same color. You can do the exact same thing, but with the ring color fill. Now we need a control for the dashes because we want ring one and ring two to have the same dash width. So this is where you go to effects and search for another slider control and drag it onto the control layer. And let's rename this to dash width. Then we can open up ring two, go to the content, open up the stroke parameters back to the dashes parameter. And here press the alt key or the option key on a Mac and select the stopwatch to activate the expressions next to dash. And then take the swirly icon again, the pick whip and pick whip it to the dash width control. Now let's do the same thing to ring one. Let's also activate the expressions and then pick whip it to the dash width control layer. You'll see that because the value is set at zero here, there are no dashes. It's just a solid line, which is one option for the look. But if we drag the dash width control into the essential graphics panel, we can then rename it to dash width and then you can control the value here. And you can see that both of the rings dash width are then in sync and the same value. And lastly, you can go in and do some formatting to the essential graphics panel so that way it's easier to use in Premiere Pro. So I'm just gonna go down to add formatting and add a couple groups here, and then I'll drag the parameters into each group so that way it's better organized. You can see I've organized it into timer controls, font controls, and color controls. And once you have it organized, then you can give your Mogart a name, and then you can move the playhead in the comp to the frame that you want to be the preview poster frame. And then back in the essential graphics panel, you can press set poster frame. And this will be the preview frame that you see in Premiere Pro. 
Then select Export Motion Graphics Template and save it to your local templates folder. Now in Premiere Pro, you can search for Timer from your central graphics panel in Premiere and drag it into your timeline. And if you're working in a 1080p timeline, you can scale it to frame size by right clicking on the layer. And then you can customize uh, the controls here however you like. You can customize the time, you can customize the glow, and you can see I added in some more customization controls such as how to adjust the ring opacity and the glow controls in this particular Mogurt. And if you'd like to get this Mogurt for free, you can sign up to become a patron and you'll get many more different free templates each month because I create them for a lot of different projects, or you can purchase it one off from my store. And once you're done customizing the controls, if you want to resize the entire graphic in the frame, use the effect controls from Premiere to scale it down and place it in the corner of your frame using the position and scale motion controls from Premiere. And so that's all there is to creating this motion graphics template timer inside of After Effects. I hope it helps open up some doors for you for when you're making your own animations in After Effects on how you can then convert it into a motion graphics template and use it in Premiere Pro. And lastly, don't forget to give me some love on Instagram. Go to Instagram now and follow at Premiere underscore gal and help us get to 10K likes so we can start sharing links in our stories and we don't have to do the whole link in bio thing anymore. Much appreciated. And if this video helps you out, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Thanks so much. And as usual, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye. Oh.